Hello and welcome to RickyJordan.com. Uh, it's been a long time coming here for this uh, for this video, but I'm proud to, to say that we're gonna we're gonna finally bring you the SolidWorks Electrical Routing Part Three. Uh, we did Part One and Part Two two year almost two years ago, uh, back in July of 2009, and things have been a little busy uh, since then. Uh, not as much time, uh, spare time for blogging and uh, doing videos as, as I'd like, but. Uh, but hey, we've gotten uh, I've gotten several emails about where's part three. You know, you gonna do a part three, and I've also gotten some comments on the site uh, about it. So hey, it's uh, it's way past time to get this done. So we're gonna go ahead and bring this to you. So um, part three is gonna cover uh, using the uh, the from to functionality, which uh, allows you to take advantage of some automation. And before we show that automation. There's a couple of quick things that I do want to show you. Uh, I could get extremely long-winded in trying to go through all the details of the setup. I'm going to try to keep it as short and as sweet as you know to the point as possible here. So, uh, first thing I want to show you is there's 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 actually three things that you need to set up prior to using From2. The first thing is going to be your from to Excel spreadsheet. The second thing is going to be your wire and cable library set up. Uh, you got to make sure that you're correspondent to that. And the third thing would be the component library set up. So let's take a very quick look at uh, this cable one, which we're going to use to start with here. And you can see this is basically this is just a complete ripoff of the sample uh, from two list that's provided uh, with a routing install. I have not changed the header names that way it corresponds to the default to the default setup. Uh, these are the signal names. All right, um, so that's that's what each signal is going to be called. Um, you also have these numbers here, these part numbers. These have to correspond. Uh, for the wire spec, they have to correspond to wires that you have existing in your cable and wire library. So these part numbers are all, are all represented in the library, so it knows the diameter, the color, all the detailed information about that wire. And this is the reference designator. So this connector is going to be named J1. Uh, some nice new functionality, which takes advantage of component instance um, component instances uh, and, a la and assigning a component instance property um, which really make this finally in my opinion the way it should have been all along um, previously these reference designators would it would rename the component you wouldn't see the name of the file uh, that's all changed with component uh, with assembly component instances which will, I'll, I'll try to touch on that towards the end of the video these are the pin numbers for all the J1 connections and they're going to route to J2 and J3. So you have J2 pins 1 through 4 which all utilize a DB9 female which again has to be in our uh, I don't think I've mentioned it both of these values have to have a corresponding entry in the component library and I'll show you that that they're in there here in a moment but uh, both of these connectors, uh, J2 and J3, are all DB9 females there. So we're going to go ahead and close that out. And then we're going to bring up the routing library manager, which can also you can bring it up in the, um, in the program files using program files SolidWorks uh, uh, from your install folder. So that's, that's kind of a new thing in the last release or two. This uh, probably didn't exist in this form uh, when we did the first two videos, but uh, it's a very nice little uh, tool to help you get routing, uh, manage your routing set up. Uh, all of your routing file locations and settings are all controlled uh, within this interface, so rather than being embedded in the tools options, it's been moved over here. Uh, very nice new enhancement there. So uh, we're going to start with the cable and wire library. You can create your own, um, a new one from scratch, or you can import via Excel. This is way easier than when I did this way back in the day um, with an Excel import to routing, uh, probably back around 2000, 2005, 2006 time frame. So this is essentially um, the cable portion of it. And I got a couple of cables to find here, multi-conductor cables. Uh, this particular one contains all of these uh, conductors, individual uh, 
eight conductors looks like. So let's go open the wire library because that's what we're going to be using. You can see that all the information, the color, the SolidWorks color, uh, the diameter of it, the OD, all of that's defined in here and it's all corresponding to these part numbers. So you can see there's our entries for 300, 301 and so on that, we're, that we had identified in our from to list. Your component library wizard, uh, again you can create your own or import. Uh, it just has to have these two entries in here under the name for db9-female and db9-f for female or 37-female and uh, I'm not sure why the paths aren't showing up here they are actually defined it allows you to specify which configuration of a connector is to be used for this as well so we're just going to cancel that uh, yes to continue that and exit and let's get back. Uh, let's get back in here and get this thing going. So to start with, I'm going to hit the start by from Tuli, to list. And again, here this is just a default name. It's going to give. Uh, you can't see a whole lot of that here, but uh, let's see if I can get it where you can see it. Uh, probably not. Not in the cards today. But uh, hey, we're going to take the default name, which um, if you arrow over and you can see it here. Yeah, it's going to be harness one. Uh, from start to assembly so we're gonna accept that default and this is important the from to cable list I'm going to choose cable 1 which we just looked at alright so we have cable 1 defined there uh, I can start a new assembly which that's what I want to do here or you can actually use an existing assembly so you have a, an existing assembly started that you started you can import this from to information into that assembly uh, the headers I use the default from uh, the SolidWorks sample so I don't have to change any of these values so that's uh, the nice thing about using that now where you may have to do something with this is if you're getting automated output from your ECAD system the header names and they're from two lists may be different so that's where you may have to to take a look at that we're going to leave default and go ahead and select OK so then routing's going to come in and ask me if I want to start placing components now yes I do so you can see it's got me in context. Uh, it's created the route assembly and I'm, I'm ready to go here. It's basically saying it's found an open document, uh, which I already, must have already had open there. So now you can see correspondent to our from two list, I got J1, J2, and J3. Um, and now it wants us to insert these components. And so what I'm going to do is go around here and yeah, we got some funny business with our, our uh, our mate references here but they're they're going in there okay and just to show hey sometimes mate references will do this I've noticed with routing um, rather than me sit there and try to figure out why the heck it's uh, it's it's doing it this way that one's gonna probably come in a little bit cockeyed we'll have to go back and fix it so that's that's where J2 is gonna live and we're just gonna put J3 right over here so it's asked me uh, do you want to start routing now uh, yes I do and we should see J3 pop in there and it's going to go straight in and set up the route properties so a lot of automation here I'm not having to I'm basically just answering questions at this point so yeah that one's kind of messed up but we'll come back and fix that uh, so we're going to go ahead and select harness type I'm not going to put any covering or anything like that I'm just going to select OK so now it comes in it automatically sets the auto route up and because the spreadsheet contained the information about where the signals was, were to be routed. Since I said, hey, here's J1, here's J2, here's J3, it has that information in there to create these guidelines. So rather than auto routing just yet, I'm going to go ahead and convert these guidelines to route lines. And we'll just start with those. And I'll go ahead and select OK. But to be back in the dialog, I can select OK. A lot of options there, filtering guidelines out if you've got many of them. All right, we can't cover everything in this. So it would be probably way too long. So now, um, man, this thing's routed for us, right? You know, it's not, not the, the probably the best routing setup, but this is the beauty of it. Uh, we hit edit wires, and all of our wiring information is here, complete with cable lengths that's pretty nice you take a little time to set this up it's even got pin numbers uh, for the selected routes I could pick this 12 volt DC route and it says that that's going from J1 pin 3 to J2 pin 3 so 
fills out all that information I can go to more properties kind of like I showed you in the last video and I can get the routed length and the cutting length so all that information it's it's there I didn't have to do anything but to import the, to, the from to you know make sure my setup was legit and then we were good to go so I'm going to cancel that and I'm going to route through clips uh, just to get these placed a little bit better this is probably uh, just a kind of a little bit reminder functionality I'm not going to spend too much time on this but uh, we're just going to select this uh, the setup here and I'm going to route through that clip and route through that clip and then uh, select OK I'm going to route through the clip again and this time we're going to say I want that segment to route through there and there so I covered that a lot of that stuff in the last videos I believe so I'm not going to dwell on it too much there but again you know it's nice having these at the top level I can I can adjust these around and uh, really make this thing nice so I'm going to come over here and probably move this one back a little bit in preparation for what I'm going to do next so oh yeah you know hey we got this thing kind of cockeyed here so let's fix that let's fix that that's one of the things you need to, you probably want to know how to do so you have to get out of the, the route sketch first but stay within content you know editing in context you see the confirmation corner tells you you're editing in context the in up here tells you that you're editing this harness in the assembly and all we need to do really is use our control key grab both of those faces and mate them together a uh, special setup with routing allows us to do that um, and, and basically mate in context so uh, routing is a heavily intensive in context uh, setup so you're definitely gonna slow your assemblies down a little bit you gotta pay uh, it's the price you pay for for doing a, a automated routing setup here okay so we'll exit out of that you know things are looking pretty nice here uh, we've got our, our route assemblies I'm gonna go ahead and save the document everything's hunky-dory right well how many times uh, and we're gonna go ahead and let those save internally and how many times has this happened to you you get uh, you get most of the way done and somebody comes back and says hey um, we had to add a connector to that cable so uh, how do you handle that well the beautiful thing about this is you have that capability within routing so we're gonna go ahead and edit in context again and select re-import from two so let's see what's really changed here by taking a look at our cable one mod file so just to make sure things make sense to you I've added these three lines here and this is essentially more connections 9 10 and 11 pins from J1 to a new J4 which is of the same DB9-F designation same part the DB9 female connector but that's a completely new connector so how's routing going to handle this well let's find out uh, first thing you have to do is you have to tell it that is the new from to list that I want to use so here's an example how we can use existing assembly and overwrite the data so we're going to go ahead and select OK it tells me that it imported successfully I'm going to go ahead and just uh, it says there are components to be added so we're going to go ahead and yes we want to insert them now get my same warning that hey it is open okay and let me see if it'll let me close that yeah that's we can see things a little better so now here here's your new j4 that it's that it's defined and we're gonna come over here and just put j4 that looks good right there uh, j4 is there and it automatically kicks me into the auto route tool it says hey what do you want to do to route this bad boy so you know the whole premise of routing as you can see I've got you know these trunks which the wires virtually run inside these trunks uh, with the edit wires command I've already got a trunk running down the side here and conveniently picks up this connector I'm going to use that same trunk line but split it off after it exits uh, this this uh, this clip over here so to do that I'm just in auto route mode I'm going to select this particular point and I'm going to come in and select that clip and what it's done is uh, the selecting the point on that clip it figured out really fast that hey 
that gives me a clean path by going from that point to that point to, to get over to that connector. As you can see, the, the diameter is screwed. This diameter is now larger than this diameter, whereas before it was carrying the same number of signals. It was carrying four signals, and we added three more to it, so it should have grown. Uh, so that's another nice feature which we had talked about a little bit earlier in routing. So we'll go ahead and select OK. Um, you know, I can come in and modify this thing. Uh, I could drop another clip in here. It wouldn't be a big deal to pop another clip and, and secure this back. But uh, more importantly, let's take a look at our, 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 our wires and see where we're at here. You can see there's line 1, 2, and 3, which I added. And if we come down to the bottom here, and go to more properties you'll see that there's my updated routing lengths and cutting lengths all up to date ready to go with my new entries into it so definitely um, a very nice piece of automation uh, if you if you deal a lot with wires and cables so uh, one last thing to show and I'll just pre-warn you on this one um, on uh, newer data sets, I've had pretty good success with this tool, but on uh, I have had this tool fail on me before, so uh, here's the pre-warning. But if you did want to document this, and we'll cover drawings uh, at a later time if we get some time, but uh, if you do want to flatten this thing, you can flatten, right-click and flatten this route. And what it does is it creates automatically a configuration within this route assembly I'm just gonna it's gonna ask me first of all do you want an annotation or a manufacturer flat and I just want an annotation more like a cable drawing and I want to show the 3d connectors rather than using the drawing connector blocks so you can see it's gonna it's gonna construct this along with the annotation links of each segment uh, so that's it's a, it can be a useful function uh, for some folks and you can see it's just a configuration uh, annotated flattened route and you can take that into a drawing uh, and and create your drawing there now I'll preface that with the statement that a lot of the new ECAD systems that I'm seeing um, you know in some setups it uh, you know it makes good sense to show uh, or actually produce your cable drawings in the ECAD package and but use the 3d package here to get uh, all of your cable links and this gives us a very quick way to get those cable links and communicate that information back um, to the electrical uh, engineer and have them put them into those cable drawings but you know it, it can be done either way um, some folks don't have the ECAD packages to do the whole deal and that's where you see uh, them, them document the cable drawings in uh, uh, using SOLIDWORKS routing so anyway that is all for today um, Again, I'm sorry it took a while to get back to this, but uh, we did finally get part three in here. Uh, stay tuned. Hopefully we'll have more videos to come.